Welcome back, JST RCY connector time. Like I said on my connector page, I really love these little connectors for the amperage range. You know, 3 amps, 5 amps, you can peak them up to 10 safely. You know, I you'll see them on, you know, little park flyer LiPo batteries. Um, I run a lot of RX batteries, dedicated RX batteries on my helicopters, larger helicopters. And they'll often come with not only a servo power plug but a JST as well. And I'll always use the JST if possible over the servo plug. Really like these plugs. I'm going to be showing you how to crimp one, uh, crimp the pin and slide it into the connector. But most people are just going to be buying the male and female. The male is uh, the smaller of the two, which slides into the female one. And they, uh, you know, they lock nice. They're easy to pull apart. Again, why I like them so much. Most people just buy these ones that are already pre-crimped and they've just got the pigtails on them. And then you can either splice them or solder them. You know, splice them like I show in the uh, splicing video. But uh, we'll show you how to crimp one. So I'm actually getting low on these. I don't have any female plugs. They use the pins, the long pins that slide into the you know, these little, I think these are 2.5 millimeter pitch pins. And to crimp these, you need one of these crimping tools. Now, this is just a cheapy one. You probably saw it in the, uh, I also use it in my servo connector page. But uh, this little hobby one, uh, it's fine for what I need. And it's got the two size crimps, a uh, slightly larger one for the JST RCY pins. And then the smaller one is for the uh, servo plug pins. To do these, it's pretty simple. Um, let's just we'll just put. Uh, I'm going to put another uh, male or sorry, uh, yeah, male end onto this pigtail that's already got a male end. We'll just put it on the other side. So the first thing you got to do is strip a little bit of wiring off. Uh, basically, I don't know what is that about three millimeters or so. You basically want. I hope this is focusing. You basically want enough wire exposed that it will just fit into the pin. This side of the crimp is actually grabbing the uh, the wiring, the wire insulation, and then the inner one uh, crimps over the actual wire strands. So, you know, that's about... I don't know, like I said, about three millimeters, uh, just over an eighth of an inch that you strip off. And then to do this, pretty simple, you just grab the pin. These are ratcheting, which is quite nice, so they'll hold. And you just put it in this way and bring it to the first or second ratch, ratchet. And then the pin is just held in the crimp. Okay, and then you get the the wire here and we'll just slide it in and you can look through the other side if you want and then you just squeeze her down and lock it and I usually do it twice so that's what you want to see um, you want to see that outside crimp section grab the wire insulation and then the inside one is what's crimping down on the actual wiring. So once you've got it crimped, there's a little tab on the top of the pin, and that's what slides in and catches in this little hole in the connector. And these connectors are, there's a number on them, both the male and the female. You've got these tiny numbers, a one and a two. One is always the negative, and two is the positive. So this is our positive lead, so we'll slide it in to the number two spot. You can see it slide in. And you need something to push it all the way in. I just use a small flat bladed screwdriver. And then once that tab passes through, it's sprung, and then it's locked. That's not going to come out. And I'll just fast forward through. Uh, we'll do the negative here.
Okay, so there we go. Now, if you ever want to take these out, it's very simple. Um, you know, get some tweezers or something and just press down on those tabs and push that little tab down. Sometimes you have to do it while you're pulling. There we go. And it just pops out and the tab is usually pressed down at that point so you have to you know just get your tweezers in there and bend it back up so when you slide it back in it'll it'll uh, catch again in the hole like so so on the female plug to pull the pins out it's a little bit more difficult it's actually quite a bit more difficult just going to uh, hopefully the camera will see I'm going to try to line that right up with the lens so hope hopefully you can see inside there you notice there's a little there's t there's a hole um, above or in this case it's actually below each pin let me just no it's above each pin I can't even see but there's a little hole above each pin and you have to slide something in that hole to depress the little tab that's holding the pin into the connector housing. I'll usually just get a needle and just slide it in there and it's usually pretty tight so, so I don't skewer myself. I'll just get a, some pliers here to hold the needle as we slide it into that little hole. Is this not working? Okay, there we go. And then the the uh, the pin will come out, and as you can see, it's crimped the same way. So if you were doing the female end, you would crimp it the same way as I did with the male end. Um, and then if you want to slide it in, just make sure that little tab is is bent up, so it will catch back in the housing. When you slide it in and you slide it in the back of the housing you'll see there's a little notch in the top that's the direction that you want that little tab to slide into and you'll hear it snap and click and then it's locked so that's all there is to a uh, jst rcy connector